because this canvas is dry today. There's nothing anywhere on the canvas except my little pencil line, which I did just a few minutes ago. So this will help my paint to sort of slide along a little better. If you're worried about painting over this, then you can leave the gel out. Just depends on what you want. I just don't want to be here all day grinding it in because this is similar to a sky in a painting. This is the soft background and I do want blended and fuzzy edges. So that's why I'm okay with thinning this down a little bit. There. Next with a, a nice light color, a nice light turquoise on the three quarter brush, I'm going to drop in some extra detail here. Now, I kind of I kind of got tired of using the three quarter brush to block this in. So pretty quickly, I ended up changing to the two inch. And I just, so you can see it's very soft. I just blocked everything in quickly. And now I think I'm going to come back in and add some brush strokes. See that? And it's just, it's just a subtle indication. It gives the, the background a little movement there. And I think that's nice. And you can kind of put this wherever you want. Um, maybe just a little here and it mixes, so you have a beautiful little background. Now, after you're finished with this background, you could stop and wait a week or so and let it dry. You could do that. Now, I'm not going to, because I like to paint just continually all in one, one little session, but, but you could certainly do that. And if you did that, you could paint over the whole background. I have to leave this rose and this bud over here blank, otherwise it would become muddy. So it just depends on the technique you want to use. There's many, many different ways to go about this. I just want you to have fun and do what's easiest for you. There's a bit of white right there. Kind of punch up that light. There. Next, I'll load up our three quarter brush with a little green and black, maybe a touch of yellow. And as you can see, I already put a stem in here just to get us started. And I, I think maybe I need a leaf right here. I have it sketched in. I think I'm just going to drop it in. Now, there's one spot I'm a little concerned about, and that would be this yellow right here. That is very thick on there. So I purposely did not put a leaf down in front of that. And if I choose to do that, I'll have to sketch it out and then take the knife and remove that paint. Because I guarantee I can't paint over that. There. So that's just kind of a tip for you. And these leaves have different shapes and angles depending on how they're facing you. You have to understand about foreshortened angles when you do this. There. And obviously not every leaf needs to be the same, but they should have a generic leaf shape. And they should all kind of hook together. At least, you know, they should make sense. They should hook onto the stem correctly. Nice. And I'm just going to come in here with just go right over my stem. I don't care. Put that stem right back in. This is a little wetter than what I'm used to. It's a lot wetter than what I'm used to painting on, but that's okay because I needed to get these big broad brush strokes and I had to build up a little texture in order to do that. And as you can see, these big bands of color really just bring this whole painting to life. See it already. I wasn't even in the bright area and it kind of got muddy there, so we might have to address that later. For now, I'm just I'm just sketching this part of the painting in. I'm not gonna go and worry about this too much. There's some smaller leaves. You can just smudge with this brush. It's a pretty big brush. So you can get some quick leaves like this. Next, with our three-quarter brush, I'll pick up just a little red, yellow touch of white and then I put just a speck of blue into it just to just to cool the color down slightly. So we end up with this beautiful deep peach color. So let's put that right in this rose. Now I have taken a, several minutes and sketched this just before we got started. So I am reasonably familiar with how this flower is shaped. <laughs> reasonably. I'm still still gonna need to be careful and not get lost. So just really follow your sketch. And my sketch is not super accurate. It's not perfect. You can see it's a little messy, but that's not the point. It's just a guide here. and It'll help me stay on track and not get any petals in weird spots. There. 
And isn't that background neat? I'm just, I keep looking at that background. I like it. It's uh, very impressionistic. I like, I like how it's going to really, it's going to really show off her flower. And it could just be leaves or sky even. Sky and big bushes and leaves and who knows what it is back there. Doesn't make any difference at all what it is. None at all. It's just beautiful color. There. I'm being careful not to overdo it. I'm only putting this color where I know that I want it. Everywhere else needs to stay blank for now. Next I'll pick up a little bit of white and yellow evenly on the brush. And I'm going to just begin working on some light areas to the side of the flower. <laughs> Pretty simple, but I am going to be careful. Although it's simple, you don't want to you don't want to get carried away and do too much or or get in areas that are, you know, too thick or too hard. You got to be careful. You got to watch what you're doing, although it's not difficult. There. You just <laughs> You just have to pay attention is all I'm saying. There. And maybe right on this bit, there's some. Not too much paint though. Because remember, there's no medium under here. Not under the flower. This area around here is wet, but the flower is, is fairly dry. Not, not a lot of slippery wet paint on there. So you can be can be sparing with the amount of paint you put on top and it won't mix together too much. There. Now we can also underpaint this bud over here while we're going. We'll just start kind of quickly blocking this one in. I actually didn't sketch this one in very well. Just knowing that it's pretty simple and basically any kind of tight petal shape we do will be fine. I don't even care if it touches some of that green and drags it in. Just helps to soften that color. I don't want it I don't want it to, so bright that it becomes the feature of the painting, of course. That one's the feature of the painting. Now before we go too far in this painting, I just want to take the liner brush here and simply work in a little more highlight. Now the reason I want to use the liner brush is because it's very soft and it's maybe Maybe probably the easiest way to layer paint over thick paint if you want a very bright, small highlight area. I hope that makes sense. What I do, I'm not thinning the paint like I normally do to draw limbs. Instead, it's very thick on the brush. And there's quite a bit. There's so much that the bristles don't really touch the canvas. It's basically just the little ridge of paint that I have built up on the edge of the brush that's hitting the canvas and that's what causes this perfectly bright pure color otherwise it just gets muddy and this flower has a lot of layers on it by now there very light touch but because the bristles are so long you're not gonna be able to push too hard this really is a good method for applying a final highlight now with our brush we can just add on a beautiful detail here to the bud a nice highlight. And bring this up and out like that. Not going to take too many, too many strokes to get this finished because it's not very big. There. And place a bit right there. A tiny sliver there. Good. Then you can come back with other colors like a blue, maybe a touch of red, and bring in a a shadow on this side. Beautiful purple color. Maybe there's just some purple in the rose. It's not even, doesn't even have to be a shadow. There. Now we'll just begin to drop on a little bit of highlight to these leaves. There. Not too much. And if you have trouble making it stick, try wiping off the leaves just a bit. Because remember, if your paint doesn't stick, it's because the background is too wet. There. Reload constantly to keep the paint fresh otherwise. Otherwise, again, you're just going to be picking up a lot, of, a lot of the underpainting. And then you're not going to be happy with it. So do this slowly, otherwise, you're, otherwise you may not quite get the shape correctly. And you want this nice leaf shape. 
and as you can see, I threw a couple leaves up in here just to help the composition a little. See how it balances everything? Pretty neat. Here's one. This one has a little less, a little less shape. It's a little smaller, so that's that's fine. Maybe a little bit on this stem. There. Nice. And you just continue doing this thing. And green is not the only color you can use. Let's change to some purple. That would be pretty. Maybe one right here. There. It's a soft purple, but it's nice. So you can do that. You can change colors. Use whatever color you want. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching.